Hey James. There's this bubbling, uneasy sentiment around Amazon and it is palpable. Besides the fact that by the time you watch this video, they will probably be the second trillion dollar company in history to reach that market cap. The discussion that everybody in the industry has today and what I wonder myself is how do companies fight the Amazon Death Star? Ooh. I wanna look at a little slice of the Death Star and talk about the other sentiment that I see, which is people feeling like Amazon is basically a Chinese flea market, and that's because it's largely turned into one. Let's start with how retail works just in general. A person makes or purchases a widget, and then sells it for more than it costs them to get that. That's it, that's retail. Whether it's this cool guy, Justin, who started a company, Dapper Woodworks, and makes things in a workshop, or if it's a merchant for J. Crew that is going out and sourcing Donegal wool from Ireland for a fall winter assortment, that is how retail has functioned since the beginning of time. There is value created in retailers like Macy's or JCPenney and early department stores with the curation of those products to bring together, and then later in specialty stores like uh, J. Crew, Banana Republic, Crate and Barrel, At Home, and all those places that you go to shop because they have cool assortments, which makes it easier for us to go and buy things. So that's retail, especially mass retail. Amazon has built value by extracting it, both from existing retailers and brands in the retail space, by leveraging data and a superior customer experience to feed that back into the Amazon brand, and so it's a great flywheel. Examining this shows us the brilliance of Amazon from Bezos on down, because it does take a village. Amazon, of course, started as a bookstore, and then they moved into extra businesses like home goods and fashion. They bought Whole Foods for more groceries. Amazon Web Services is the biggest way that they make money. It's the biggest profit, not the biggest of revenue, but they provide data services to Netflix, the early days of Instagram, and the CIA, just to name a few. The retail side of Amazon largely runs at a break-even or very low margins because they're constantly reinvesting in the business and building out the infrastructure for all of the fulfillment that's required to serve all of the customers of Amazon. So we're looking at this on the retail side of Amazon, which is how most people interact with a brand. I know myself, I'm a 10-year Amazon Prime member. I've got the subscribe and save. Or it's fully ingrained in this house, but there's three things that happen in Amazon's history that have encouraged the current state of Amazon's retail business. Number one, one is the marketplace. So anybody can get listed on Amazon and sell alongside Amazon. So there's products that you buy directly from Amazon, those are fulfilled through Amazon, but then there's products that are fulfilled by distributors and those are listed right alongside of each other. That was all well and good, but the floodgates opened really when Amazon launched Fulfillment by Amazon. So Amazon has tons of infrastructure for distribution and fulfillment and shipping and delivery, which they allow people to get onto their platform, pay them a fee in order to fulfill that. The big key to this is they removed all of the barriers for anybody to come in and sell on Amazon. So you no longer had to get warehouse space and, and manage inventory and everything else. You can do it all through Amazon, just pay them a fee, and you never have to get your hands dirty in the product, which is what retailers always have to do. The third and equally as important as Amazon by fulfillment is Alibaba. Now I tried to find when this really became prevalent in the United States. Alibaba launched not long after Amazon in the late 90s, but when it really entered the space in the US, I found around 2011. But what it is is a systematic way for buyers and sellers who use use Amazon as a platform to source products from China and other countries. So you're connecting the manufacturing with sales and distribution over on the other side. And there's always been the ability to go to China and source products. If you read the excellent book, Shoe Dog by the Nike founder, Phil Knight, he himself went to China, but there's always been barriers associated with that. He had to go over there, there's a language barrier. You had to have, you had to purchase the inventory, you had to manage the inventory once it got back. And that's what he talks about in his book is how he was constantly poor because he was reinvesting investing in inventory and reinvesting in the business, which is what happens when you have to buy a bunch of stuff, store it before you distribute it. So the internet put cracks in those barriers, but then Alibaba and Amazon, fulfillment by Amazon specifically, drove through those cracks and destroyed all the barriers. The popular term for this is drop shipping, and I'll give it to you in a nutshell. This is what happens. I go to an Amazon search ranking tool, which shows me that within Amazon, there's this market that's underserved, whether it's Bluetooth headphones or home goods products, anything else, it'll show you where you could essentially dominate in a category. I like to use the example of a lemon squeezer because two years ago when I bought one, that's what like sent me down this path to learn more about this space. But remember, Amazon is the biggest search engine right behind Google and 55% of product purchases start on Amazon. So somebody either starts there and searches and goes buy somewhere else, or what happens in a lot of cases is somebody goes to a store, searches on Amazon, finds a better price, and gets delivered to them at home, which is called showrooming. So the Amazon tool shows me that the lemon squeezer category is ripe for a product leader. I go to Alibaba, I find a manufacturer in China or several hundred manufacturers in China that could produce me a lemon squeezer. I want to make sure that I'm gonna make some margin. So Amazon's gonna take about a third of the cut, 
due to their distribution fulfillment and then I want to have some margin and so I want to get the cost to be around two dollars so if I can buy a few thousand lemon squeezers for two dollars I can get those sent directly to Amazon's warehouses I never have to touch the product then I buy some search traffic on Amazon that drive people to the product people buy the product that gets my rank a little bit higher people review the product that burst it up, suddenly I'm selling 20 lemon juice squeezers a day and that's easily a six figure business in a year. There's a lot of nuance in there like sample production, uh, keyword targeting and branding, but those are the broad strokes. So take that process and apply it to nearly anything on Amazon, whether it's home goods or fashion and multiply that by the thousands of people that are trying to participate in this space because it is very lucrative and it's not just Americans, it's anybody with an internet access and a bank account can compete. It's this cutthroat underbelly of Amazon that people don't really see but it's this race to the bottom because whatever the cheaper product is people are going to buy it and then that'll continue to boost it and so it's this crazy vicious cycle all it really takes is a little bit of knowledge and some low tolerance for risk when i mentioned earlier that amazon extracts value from brands a really good example of this is the battery category do you remember how expensive batteries were for your game boy as a kid like i we went to the dollar store and got those like cheap terrible ones that never really lasted and i would lust after getting an energizer one because of the bunny and I, and they always did last because they were lithium on and they were much better batteries. If you search Amazon for batteries today, you'll find well-made, high-quality batteries at low prices, but you won't really find Energizer, you'll find Amazon Basics. And Amazon Basics is its own beast. Multi-million dollar products that are sold under the Amazon Basics brand because you have all these people competing to get the top spot and all these drop shippers that are trying to make great products. King Amazon can just sit at the top and cherry pick the businesses that look really good, really profitable, really growing, and then slap an Amazon Basics logo on there. They can then use their scale to get great prices on products, use their data analytics in order to show the market size for there, and then you've got a million dollar business overnight within the Amazon retail category, and then you as a dropshipper are eliminated from the process. Because every time that an Amazon Basics product is created, the margins of a established brand are eroded, whether that's energy Johnson & Johnson or DKNY in the case of bath towels because they can't compete with the audience that Amazon has and the data analytics on the audience that Amazon has. And this is really where the challenge for Macy's, JCPenney, or Walmart sits because they're relying on Google traffic whereas Amazon has all the search traffic from their own engine and that's why Walmart opened up its own marketplace to try and compete because they know they need the product, they need this, the breadth of products that Amazon has but they can't do it all themselves. It's just this entirely new paradigm and it's fascinating to watch. I don't participate in it but I do know several people that do and I follow a couple of guys that are uh, trying to build dropship businesses on their own and I thought I would just open you up to this world. So there you have it, gents. That is the uh, crazy Amazon Death Star that it is building in retail right now. And it's fascinating to watch. It's incredible to watch that paradigm shift. But remember, at some point, somebody will come and eat Amazon's lunch, whether it's the government breaking it up or a new upstart that's bubbling right now that's going to take it over. It's not me but I would love to unbox whatever it is or talk about that type of thing. That's what I love to cover on this channel. Emerging small brands, let you guys know about them and then uh, round them up and talk about them. So I'd love to hear from you on your comments on Amazon. I know in the past some of you guys have said you eliminate Amazon entirely. It's really ingrained in my house. I don't know that we could really drop it for, uh, it would take some real effort to get out of the habit, but I'm okay with it right now. They haven't really done anything to break my trust. Um, unlike some other giant tech companies. And so uh, let me know what you think below and I'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time, gents, this is The Cavalier. That's what you think? Okay, I guess it's like kind of hot in here, Molly.